afternoon. It's good to, good to see everybody. Um, spring has sprung again, which is nice. Um, this being Palm Sunday begins uh, Holy Week, and it's uh, really, really initiates the uh, last seven days and the beginning of the end for Jesus' earthly ministry, and it is to be celebrated. And if you could imagine, if you could go back and witness that first Palm Sunday, what type of emotions would you be feeling? Imagine what it would be like to be there, a Passover is there once again. It's that time of the year. And it's a very tense time in Jerusalem because you had the Roman overseers watching everything that happened. The crowds were getting worse. And people were shoulder to shoulder. And you could hear people saying, Jesus is coming. There's an excitement building as the crowd swells. The shouts down the road are getting louder. And you, as you see a man on a donkey come into view, people in the crowd are shouting, Hosanna! As the procession moves closer to you, you see a crowd spreading palms, tree limbs, cloaks on the road of his path. This is Jesus who is coming and you're seeing it. You're there. You're experiencing it. You wonder if all the rumors are true about this man, Jesus. Would he be the Messiah that would liberate the Jewish nation from the grips of Rome? You recall what was prophesied in Zechariah 9.9. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey, and well, as well as Zechariah 9.10. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. That's pretty lofty. Jesus comes by you and you're caught up in the event and you are shouting Hosanna in excitement. He continues on and you lose sight of him. And as Jesus disappears through the east gate to the temple, the crowd follows him in. And you were left there with a lot of questions because things aren't squaring up in your reasoning Riding on a donkey? Shouldn't it be a horse? Because a donkey is a symbol for peace. Most of us have been to a big event where crowds have been filled with excitement. And we've had very high expectations that it, whatever the event was called, called to become, that it would be delivered. You were expecting something. The crowd's perception of Jesus as king was described in John 2.13. They took palm branches and went to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the king of Israel. Blessed be the Masonic warrior liberator. No. Doesn't match up. Something's not quite right in our human the, our human thinking. By the end of the week, Jesus became the big letdown. The praises of Hosanna in the highest turned to shouts of crucify him. Jesus was the big disappointment for the crowd. It's not what they expected. It wasn't salvation in regards to sin. They wanted salvation in a physical sense, liberation from the Romans, and it didn't happen. Big letdown. The question is, 
God Almighty or God all vulnerable? Or is it both? God has his mighty acts all through scripture. And you think of this time of the year, you think of Egypt's movement out of the Egyptian grip and the Red Sea being parted and the waters, walls of water collapsing in on the uh, pursuing Egyptian army and eventually the collapse of the Egyptian civilization at that time facing the plagues that was God's mighty act and mighty power of deliverance but in this case Jesus is a little bit different Jesus had his displays of power turning water into wine walking on water um, raising people from the dead you know Jesus, Jesus also came to us as a servant in a much different way than we humanly would expect it in Mark 10 45 for even as the son of man has come to not to be served but to serve and to give life Give a life of ransom for many. And in Jesus' prayers, or should I say Paul's prayers, to Jesus, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Weakness. Not almighty power. We don't relate power and weakness together. How can this be? Are both power and weakness, are they the same thing? Do they mesh together? The human idea of power is having control over our lives. To protect our self-made person, our ego, we create walls. Don't let anybody know what you're really like. Relationships crumble when you have that approach. Safety and security, are, are, they are paramount. But you know what? Every time we, we like the, the way the world is, the way humanly we look at it, we get up in the morning, get ready for work, and then we put on our Iron Man outfit, and we don't care if people throw eggs at us or what, because we are enclosed in our own little world. We don't really want to be... Vulnerable? C.S. Lewis says, to love is to be vulnerable. And vulnerability has its risks. And Jesus found that out, didn't he? He's not coming to us as an almighty God, but a very vulnerable God. You know, Jesus loved Judas. Jesus discipled Judas. Jesus cared for Judas, knowing all along that Judas would be the one to betray him. True love that holds nothing back has always been open to betrayal. And I think there's some here, including myself, that have faced things like that in life, whether it be a divorce or a good friend, a really, really good friend stabbing you in the back, doing something totally that you would never expect. And what it does, it collapses us into ourselves. That we don't want to relate to others. We want to put up our army, armor and stay within our own shell. And we don't want to get deep with people anymore because we've been hurt. I get back to what Jesus said to Paul my grace is sufficient for you my grace is sufficient for you Jesus showed vulnerability in, in his interaction in our broken world in so many different ways he was the suffering God 
came into our suffering with us. His heart was opened up to us as an example the widow with the dead son where he went in the city of Niam and the outskirts of the city there's a funeral procession and on that bier which is a wooded platform that the dead body is carried on Jesus, Jesus grieved and showed great compassion to the point of ripping his insides up inside to see this widow lose her son. If you step back and you look, you realize that in the society at that time, uh, people, they didn't have safety nets. Once you're outside the family, or you, you're lose family if you're divorced. That's why there wasn't a lot of divorce or anything like that because you're by yourself. You're on your own. And this lady, she showed vulnerability, and Jesus saw it. And he reacted to that vulnerability in her by healing her son and giving him to her. She couldn't stand alone, and he, he felt great compassion. God really cares. God just doesn't do mighty works, and we see it all through Scripture. It's just not to say, wow, I'm God. And this is what I can do. No. It's about, he cares for us. In a much different way. In a, in a way that communicates relation. God exposes heart to us. And he cares about our sufferings. He is ever present. In Isaiah 56, 50 verse 6, Jesus' vulnerability was prophesied. As he said, I offer my back to those that beat me, my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I did not hide my face. Jesus was completely open to it. He didn't hold back. He was completely vulnerable. And he took it for us. Those who pulled up my beard, I did not hide my face, nor from the mocking and spitting. Because of Jesus' openness and vulnerability, we reap rewards of a restored relationship with God. And vulnerability helps us to grow in ways that we can't imagine. Again, my grace is for you. And if you've been hurt, it takes time to grow out of that, to be able to be able to have a deep relationship with others, to invite others, and to bear your heart again. Again, my grace is sufficient. Palm Sunday reveals the power of love shown in a self-giving king self-giving king willing to never reject us he didn't reject Judas he loved Judas that should show something to us considering he's the one that betrayed Jesus pointed him out in the crowd that he could be taken away and taken to the cross This was a much different type of king, I'm thinking about Palm Sunday, than the crowd was expecting. Jesus came, he was a seed sown in weakness, and it reached the very depths of our being and gave us a life. He drew us back into his love. As God's children, we should be willing to reach out and be open to others. Vulnerability is really strength and power. It's the strength and power that transforms and brings us into a new way of thinking in life with others. And nothing easy about it. And it wasn't easy for Jesus, but we do follow Jesus.
Our gracious God, we thank you for the awesomeness of this day and now that we see a deeper, a deeper meaning behind the palms and the things that you went through and the th events and the people that you interacted with, we pray and ask for your strength that we can as well. Become more vulnerable as you share with us your vulnerability. That we can move forward and open ourselves up to others. We give thanks for who you are and what you did and how you went to the cross and gave us true salvation that you, you opened yourself up to ridicule, beatings, the scourging, and suffered tremendously for us. You didn't hold anything back. And through your power and strength and grace, we also should not hold anything back. But we can become more like you and follow you in, on that path the same way you did. We give thanks now and praise and ask these things in the name of your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.